Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in Anatomy and Physiology, you'll learn about the 22 skull bones, most of which consist of flat or irregular bones that are connected together by jagged suture joints, making it look like a creepy 3D jigsaw puzzle. The 22 skull bones make up part of our axial skeleton and you can divide them into two main portions. You have the eight cranial bones and then the 14 facial bones. Now here's a quick tip about your skull bones. In the cranial part, those are all gonna be single bones except for two pairs of bones. But for your facial bones, it's gonna be flipped. All of those are gonna be pairs of bones except for two, which are single bones. Let's take a look at the eight cranial bones first, starting with those two pairs of bones. The first pair of bones in the cranium are the parietal bones. The word parietal sounds similar to pair, so that can help you remember that there are two of them. As I mentioned in my body cavities video, the word parietal actually means a wall, and so these bones make up the side wall of your cranium. Now, if you spend too much time studying anatomy and physiology, you'll probably get a headache, and if that happens, you can just massage the sides of your temple to relieve the pressure. And hey, guess what these bones are called? They're called the temporal bones. And this is another pair of bones that are located just inferior to the parietal bones. Okay, so those are the two pairs of cranial bones. That means we've already covered four. We just have four cranial bones left and the rest are single and ready to mingle. For the next bone, take a look at my forehead. This is the front of my cranium and it also covers the frontal lobe of my brain. And guess what anatomists called this bone? They called it the frontal bone. Aren't those anatomists so clever? Forehead and frontal both start with F, so this is probably the easiest cranial bone to remember. The sphenoid bone is a butterfly-shaped bone that articulates with all of the cranial bones and spans the entire width of the cranium, which you can see when you look at the inferior view of the skull. The sphenoid also looks like a specter, which is another word for ghost. So the sphenoid is the specter that spans the cranium. And by the way, don't be fooled by the lateral skull view because when you look at this from the side, it appears as though the sphenoid is another pair of bones, just like the temporal or parietal bones. However, when you flip it under, you'll see this is just one large bone that spans the cranium. Next, we have the ethmoid bone, which comes from a word that means strainer. And that's because the top of this bone has something called cribriform plates that contain tiny holes resembling a strainer. And it's located inferior to the frontal bone between the sphenoid and nasal bones. So whenever you look at the skull from the anterior view, you can just see a little part of it right there in the eye opening behind the nasal bones. And that's how I like to remember the ethmoid bone is the ethmoid is the enclosed cranial bone. You don't see very much of it. Next, we have the occipital bone. And the word occipital literally means behind the head. And it covers the occipital lobe of the brain, which processes visual images. Now, it doesn't make sense to a lot of people that we have eyes on the front of our head, but the part of our brain that processes the visual images is on the back of our head. But it makes perfect sense to me because I have eyes on the back of my head. Okay, we are done with the cranial bones. Here's a quick mnemonic to help you remember the cranial bones, starting from front and working our way to the back. Ethan's fried Spanish pasta tempted Octavia. Now let's cover the 14 facial bones. And remember, all of these bones are pairs except for two, which are single. So let's start with the single bones in the face. First, we have the mandible, which is the jaw bone. Now, what's one facial feature that a lot of girls say that they find attractive on guys? They say that they like that chiseled jawline. In other words, they want a guy with a manly mandible. And it's funny because the mandible is actually the strongest bone in your face. So, hey guys, even if you don't have a strong jawline, at least you can have a strong jawbone. And for the other single bone in the face, we have the vomer. And this thin, flat bone forms the inferior part of the nasal septum, which is down the median plane of the nose. And you can see a small part of it when you look at the skull from the anterior view because it actually extends deep into the skull and it gets its name from an ancient word that means plowshare. And it's much easier to see if you look at it from the inferior view of the skull. Next, we have the nasal bones. And these are the easiest facial bones to remember because they make up the bridge of the nose. And the word nasal, of course, literally means related to the nose. So if you get no other bones correct on your anatomy test, you should at the very least get the nasal bones and the frontal bone correct because those are just handed to you. Next, we have the inferior nasal concha or concha as some people pronounce them. And these bones are easy to locate if you let the name help you out. Inferior is a directional term that means lower. Nasal means related to the nose. 
and concha means shell-shaped. So put them together and you've got shell-shaped bones in the lower part of the nose. Boom, easy peasy. The lacrimal bones are also easy to remember. Check out this picture of this girl right here with lacrimal fluid all over her face. Well, lacrimal fluid is just another name for tears. Where are the lacrimal bones located? Right next to your tear ducts. Next, we have the palatine bones. And if you think about the roof of your mouth, you have what's known as the hard palate. Well, why do you think that hard palate is hard? You have bones behind that tissue. And the palatine bones make up the posterior part of your palate. So that's how you can remember that. The posterior palate is the palatine bone. Next, we have the zygomatic bones, which is just a fancy word for your cheekbones. And then finally, we have the maxilla or maxillary bones, which make up the maximum area of the face and articulates most all of the facial bones. And that's how you can remember these bones. The maxilla make up the maximum part of the face. Now, here's a quick mnemonic that can help you remember the facial bones. My mouth's palate never liked zucchini in vinegar. Okay, so that wraps up the 14 facial bones and the eight cranial bones. Now, there are a few other bones in this general vicinity which are not considered technically skull bones, but they're considered associated bones because they're in that general area. I'll give a brief mention to these. First, we have the hyoid bone, and this is a U-shaped bone, which actually attaches to the tongue and it helps us with swallowing. And then, of course, we have the auditory ossicles, or the ear bones. And you have three ear bones on each side, and these include the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, also known as the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, due to their appearance. Okay, so that wraps up this video over the skull bones. We have a free quiz on our website that you can take. You don't have to register or sign up or download anything. Just click the link in the description below and scroll down on the page and select your answers and hit submit. And you can test your knowledge over the skull bones. In addition, I have more anatomy videos and we'll be covering more topics in the future. The bones, I might do the cranial sutures and maybe some of those landmarks. So you might wanna check those out. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe.